Honorable Chairperson, supporting Chair Ladies Jane and Leslie, Honorable Ministers present, um, distinguished participants of the forum. First, I want to apologize for my inability to attend uh, because of medical reasons. I would have loved to have been present. Unfortunately, uh, I'm not there. Uh, so I take it as a list of my problems to try to address you through the medium of uh, a video recording. Um, what you are engaged on uh, with the forum today might be said to be the key uh, to ensuring healthy, uh, productive future generation of the globe. We're going to discuss the impact of school feeding uh, of children around the globe uh, on the society uh, of the future, including the uh, economies, especially in the poorer parts of the world, uh, of which the Africa south of Sahara is uh, an epitome. Um, you would recall that uh, earlier on in the century, the United Nations set up a special task force using agriculture to fight poverty and hunger. Uh, from this, the African Union, of which I happen to have been uh, a member, uh, then as president of Ghana, in 2003 adopted as part of uh, its uh, objects of the new partnership for African development, adopted uh, school feeding programs in member countries as ways of helping uh, uh, nurture our children properly and also um, encouraging our farmers uh, to move from subsistence agriculture into commercial agriculture. When I returned from the conference, I believe it was in Durban, South Africa, to Ghana, um, my government uh, was so enthused with the idea and initiative that uh, we quickly adopted a policy uh, to uh, try to give nutrition to our school children as a way to attract the children and their parents to put the children to school rather than hang around in fields and homes uh, because one, parents were poor uh, to send the children to school and uh, two, especially with the girl child, the parents wanted uh, to, uh, the girl child to stay at home uh, to follow their mothers, uh, to help prop up their livelihoods. Uh, policy of school feeding uh, was perhaps a, a policy uh, the time of which had come, um, because by the turn of the century, um, uh, the United Nations itself had set up a task force to try to use agriculture uh, to fight poverty and hunger. Uh, the African Union latched on to the UN policy and uh, in 2003 uh, adopted a policy to encourage the African Union governments to use school feeding programs uh, as a way to nourish the children properly and uh, also to excite agricultural development. My, it's as a result of this that my government uh, was first, I believe, in sub-Saharan Africa, Africa to adopt the policy of one nutritious meal a day for our school children. Uh, when we adopted this policy, uh, it proved so popular uh, that it encouraged enrollment uh, dramatically of children in schools. Uh, uh, because uh, government was giving the food free to the children, uh, we found that, in, especially in the rural parts, parents rushed to put these children in school, because otherwise 
uh, they were finding it difficult to make ends meet even at home. We put the children to school. Uh, and there was another policy that uh, enjoined to, uh, parents to put all children uh, to school compulsorily. Why? Because government was again uh, undertaking underwriting the cost of children going to school. And um, these two together ensured that children were rushed to school. Within the first year, enrollment jumped by 26%. And uh, the girl child, who in many parts of the country because of tradition and also poverty, would have been left out of school, was also put in. And uh, we found that in addition to the children being nourished, uh, they were also kept in schools. And we saw that uh, it wasn't just nourishment or and education. With the girl child, it was also a fight against teenage pregnancies. So uh, this was what we did. But uh, we found that uh, since it was also part of the policy to use local food, we found that uh, we were institutionalizing or setting a cycle in motion where the, the market, the, the farmer, the small farmer was assured of a solid market for his or her produce and uh, thereby uh, he or she getting enriched. Uh, in between the other handlers, uh, cooks for the children, uh, transporters, uh, people who would add value of one way or the other were also being enriched. And they, they, we found this was a good impact on the economy of Ghana. But this was just an aspect of uh, agricultural uh, development and productivity in the economy. Uh, I say only part because my government had come to power 2001 identifying agriculture as uh, perhaps the most central uh, factor of our economy. And uh, that if we got agri development correct, then perhaps we would also set in motion proper economic growth. Why do I say this? I say this because over 60% of our people live on the land. And uh, apart from cocoa, which had always been the main crop supporting the economy of Ghana, uh, the rest, our farmers had used uh, uh, traditional methods, slash and burn and hoe and cutlass. Uh, so our Greek was stagnant. And uh, when government identified agriculture as one sector to tackle, to change, transform the economy, Ghana decided, say on the cocoa front, to back the farmer with uh, fertilizers, uh, with uh, insecticides, insecticides and so forth, pesticides, to give productivity uh, to the efforts of the farmer. Of course, there was always uh, the extension services advice to the farmer. With, with these public sector supports uh, for the farmer, we found within a short space of three, four years, agricultural production doubling and uh, spreading wealth, even in our rural communities, among uh, otherwise poor farmers. Uh, so school feeding had helped activates agricultural activity uh, in a predictable way and also to set up proper markets there in the rural parts for our farmers. But the additional aspect of helping the cocoa farmer and other crop producers, as I have indicated, extension services, uh, the fertilizer supply, all at the expense of state to move the private sector uh, farmer who constituted majority of the people uh, have become the order of the day and uh, so the economy since then has been bouncing forward. But I believe Ghana is a, a 
typical of the sub-Saharan African countries. That we, we are all like cast in the same boat, uh, with most of our people living on the land. If we want to transform our economies and our nations, then I would say let's look at uh, the agricultural sector and um, launch a public-private partnership policy whereby the states would lend a hand to our generally impover impoverished farmers, small-scale, uh, tradition-bound methods of production, and seek to use ways and means to help uh, the farmers transform, uh, depending on extension service advice and guidance, and also uh, some subsidized support against pesticides and uh, uh, also appropriate fertilizer use and application. So they, they, they will make some economic sense of their toils on the land uh, to, make, to make them productive. Uh, one way they can do this is to pursue this policy of school feeding with state support to ensure proper nourishment of our children, enhance their uh, cognitive abilities, uh, then to give predictability in the rural parts to the small farmer when he or she produces, they are assured that there's the demand for their supplies to, to feed the children profitably. The, the farmer would gain, the nation would gain with healthy children who can learn better and become uh, good citizens in the future. We, we are talking of the future of our children uh, when we talk school feeding programs. And uh, I believe uh, to uh, realize, to succeed with these programs, governments, and when I talk government, I'm talking of the president right through the ministers to, uh, of central government to the local government organizations, uh, give leadership to the entire populations and communities within the nation. When government gives this leadership, uh, I believe the people will follow, and then we are assured of the sustenance and success of the program uh, is critical. And I also find that uh, with globalization, there are organizations like the Partnership for uh, Child Development and uh, Global uh, Child Nutrition Forum and others who would come in once the policy is right and the, the global community senses that a nation is moving in the right direction with commitment these other people would come in uh, in the spirit of partnership to encourage and support governments that give such leadership to their people. And uh, we, we spread the burdens of implementation uh, lighter on government and the people as a whole. For closing remarks, I wish the, the forum great success. Uh, you are concerned, engaged on a global venture, uh, especially for the poorer parts of the world. Uh, the, the, your success should help spread the equity that is critical for the global village. So all peoples are given the opportunity to, to develop 